Good evening, St. Matthews, and welcome to Evening Prayer for Thursday, the 10th of September. We were talking about um, God's mercy yesterday, and our psalm for today talks about his loving kindness. His loving kindness endures forever. And it reminded me of something. So it may seem like a strange question, but I'm going to ask anyway. Do you guys use a loofah? Now, just in case you wonder where I'm going with this, um, I was reminded this week of another kind of loofah. It's L-U-F-A. Love, understanding, forgiveness, and acceptance. Well, actually, I was reminded because we celebrated our wedding anniversary earlier this week. And that was um, the message for one of our pre-wedding ceremonies. And whilst loofah, um, is important for any of our relationships. The one place that we experience that is, is with God, is in his presence, is the way he loves us. So as we gather this evening, just like you enjoy time with someone you love, um, a coffee with um, a friend that you're meeting up um, with after a long time, or someone you love, just imagine this as we pause in God's presence. He loves to spend this time with us, to dwell with us. So remember that, that God loves you. And let's join in evening prayer, which in the daily prayer book for Thursday is on page 167. Our readings for today are Psalm 138 and Mark chapter nine. So let's just pause as we begin. O oh God, make speed to save us. O oh Lord, make haste to help us. There shall come forth a shoot from the stock of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots, and the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide by what his ears hear, but with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. The wolf shall dwell with the lamb and the leopard shall lie down with the kid. The calf, the lion and the fatling together with a little child to lead them. They shall not hurt or destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. That this evening may be holy, good, and peaceful. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As our evening prayer rises before you, O God, so may your mercy come down upon us to cleanse our hearts and to set us free to sing your praise now and forever. Amen. So let's turn to God's word and we will start with Psalm 138, which can be found on page 860 at the back of the daily prayer book. Psalm 138. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods will I sing praise to you. I will bow down towards your holy temple and praise your name because of your love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. In that day that I called out to you, you answered me. You put new strength in my soul. All the kings of the earth shall praise you, O Lord, for they have heard the words of your mouth. They shall sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. 
Though the Lord be high, he watches over the lowly. As for the proud, he regards them from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will preserve me. You will stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand will save me. The Lord shall make good his purpose for me. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Your loving kindness, O Lord, endures forever. And so we pray. Lord our God, supreme over all things, look upon the humble and lowly and put new strength into our souls to complete your purpose for us. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So we turn now to the New Testament reading, which is taken from Mark chapter 9, verses 2 to 13. And it can be found on page 42 of the Church Bibles. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them. And his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud there came a voice. This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what this rising from the dead could mean. Then they asked him, Why do the scribes say that Elijah must come first? He said to them, Elijah is indeed coming first to restore all things. How then is it written about the Son of Man that he is to go through many sufferings and be treated with contempt? But I tell you that Elijah has come, and they did to him whatever they pleased, as it is written about him. So this is... Um, Jesus's transfiguration and um, Jesus didn't want um, Peter and James and John to to set up any um, any dwellings on that mountain um, and he continues to meet with us but not just on the mountain he comes down into the valleys with us he dwells with us and just like he gets transformed um, in our lives when we receive him as Lord, as Savior, as friend, as counselor, as comforter, he also transforms our lives. So let's turn to our responsory. Let's respond to that. <clears throat> it's on page 170. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name, you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name, you are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not. For I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So let's join in the Magnificat, the song of Mary. You have filled the hungry with good things 
and sent the rich away empty. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He has looked with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So let's turn to a time of prayer. And just as Jesus promised his disciples um, that he would transform their lives, um, as we look around us and as we look within, um, there's plenty that needs um, restore, restoring and transformation. Um, so let's, let's seek his face as we, as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the way you meet with us. We thank you for the privilege of being able to come into your presence as sons and daughters of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we thank you that when you step into our lives and our hearts, oh Father, that things don't stay the same regardless of what's happening around us. Father, we thank you that we can be anchored in, in the hope that you give us. We can rest in, in your everlasting arms. So Father, this evening, we want to pause. Um, we want to ask that you will meet with us, just like you met with Peter and James and John on that mountain. Father, that you will reveal more of yourself to us. That we will see you in, in all your brilliance and in all your radiance. Father, we know that as we come into your presence, we know that we stand on holy ground. And we thank you that we are yours. So, Father, we pray that you will continue to journey with us through these mountains and these valleys. And, Father, reveal yourself to us. Father, we, we ask this evening for transformation in our world, in our nation, in our communities. Father, and... We feel so blessed to be part of the St. Matthew's community. Father, we thank you that we know you, we know your love, and we know the love that we share in our community. Father, and this is not just for us. We know that you have loved us and you have commissioned us, a Father, to, to go out and love just the way you, you do. So, Father, we pray that you will transform our lives so that we may continue to worship you and witness for you and reach out with the love of Jesus in practical ways, in ways of, Father, that um, our hurting world, our hurting community needs right now. Father, as people struggle with um, lives really being turned upside down and 
just not knowing what um, what the the future holds, or just this uncertainty. Father, we pray that we will be your instruments and share your love, which is steadfast. Um, to remind people that 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 it's okay not not to feel okay at this time, because it's not us who can who can manage it or make it all right. It's you who are in control. Father, we want to be your heart and your hands and your feet. And we pray that you will meet with each one of us individually and you will um, show us, a Father, where you want us to go, who you want us to reach out to that we will be open to the working of your spirit. Father, transform us um, on the inside. Father, we pray that you will make us more like you. Father, we thank you for this privilege of being able to spend time together in your presence. And we thank you that, that you will continue to journey with us through the rest of this evening. Hear our prayer, for we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. So as we continue to dwell on um, his loving kindness, which endures forever, um, let's just continue to, to worship with this next song that says, nobody loves us like, like Jesus does.
So we gather our prayers together in the collect for Thursday evening. O oh God, the source of all good desires, all right judgments, and all just works, give to your servants that peace which the world cannot give, that your hearts, that our hearts, may be set to obey your commandments, and that freed from the fear of our enemies, we may pass our time in rest and quietness. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. So that brings evening prayer for Thursday to a close. As we um, continue to enjoy the rest of the evening, we pray for rest and we pray for quietness. And we pray that we will know his loving kindness. And don't forget, use your loofah. Love, understanding, forgiveness and acceptance, because that's what we have from Jesus. And don't forget to join Richard live tomorrow morning for, for morning prayer. God bless you guys. Bye.